and the last thing I ever wanted to do was to turn into my grandfather, who also to turn into my mother, and these things kind of all kind of came to um, a head, asking my mom about this one question, and it it changed the the way I look at what uh, she had to go to through when we were. So I wrote Eardrum because um, as I was going through stories that I could tell or think about telling, um, as I kind of wrote in the story that this, uh, this memory came up of a time when um, I got hit in the ear and I was actually, the prompt that kind of led me to this is there was like uh, surgeries I think or something like that. I ended up needing ear surgery after this had happened and uh, originally I was going to write the story from when I was a kid but then I started to realize that there were uh, pockets of, uh, of the story that I didn't recall because um, it was so long ago and uh, you can't, I can't tell that story so one of the rules of, of telling the stories at least one of the rules I'm trying to follow is you tell it from the perspective of where you are that, in that moment uh, it's not me telling the story uh, from now about then um, with it. So I can't say I'm, you know, I'm a seven-year-old or I'm a six-year-old or whatever it was uh, and go through the story if there's all these items uh, missing. So I was trying to fill in some of those those, those holes and I reached out to uh, to my mom. And I, as I kind of noted, I don't, I don't often reach out and, and just chat. Um, uh, before, uh, right after COVID, when I wasn't driving anywhere, um, it was five days a week work from home. Like I, I actually didn't reach out to her and I realized I only call her when I come when I was commuting um, and I still kind of only call her when I'm commuting uh, just there's always other things going on it's not the great I'm not the greatest son but uh, at the end of the day that's just the uh, the time that I find most convenient to make phone calls um, anyway so so I reach out to her and I'm talking to her about the story and I kind of detail to her what what um, I did recall and we were going back and forth about little moments and then she started to tell me about uh, right after she got home which um, I go to in the story but essentially they tried to tell her that me and my brother were playing and I hit my head against the table and she said she walked in to, to check on me I was in one of the guest rooms like the room that we, me and my brother would play in um, a lot and she's like okay well where did the hand shaped table come from uh and kind of like kind of made that crack about it uh and we went back and forth about about how silly that was but that's where where we ended up getting the lie that we told the doctor and then as we were talking about the conversation with the doctor i i was like wait why did we lie like why didn't we i mean uh, again other than the fact that other than the fact that he's family and right you technically don't like try to get your family arrested or try to get your family fined or try to get your family whatever um what what else was there because she was a cop at the time and she actually i don't think it maybe then she was but she was our she at some point in her career worked child abuse cases so and that's what this was um a little backstory, I guess. Like my grandparents were uh, very physical. Um, they 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 were physical with with her. They were physical with their other kids. They were physical with me and my brother. And we had um, we had this. My brother and I have had this joke. It's not really a joke. I shouldn't say a joke. We've had this conversation about how it seemed like they took out any type of punishment out on me first um and i and i talked to my mom about this as well that i kind of was the brunt of uh whenever something needed to happen it was they targeted me more than him and the the excuse that i get the, the conversation that comes from that is always you 
acted more like your father than your brother did. And yeah, they didn't like my dad, that's fine. But at the same time, holy shit, like that's something that uh, an elementary school kid or a middle school kid or fuck even a high school kid has to deal with of you're too much like your dad so any chance we get to punish somebody we're coming after you uh, there's actually this story where my brother and I were doing something I was at a grandma's house and something happened I, I, I don't know we dropped something we pushed something we I don't know we did something we were always we were always causing causing chaos and my grandma came out of the kitchen towards where we were and I didn't see my brother told me this later but he was behind me and as she was walking, all he did was point at me, and he is the one that did it, and she just laid into me. And I was just like, why the fuck am I getting my ass kicked right now? Um, they, they, yeah, they, they would hit me, they would do things. There was a time where I remember being little and, like, little, little, and crying about something. And I remember my grandma trying to put a pillow over me to stop me from crying. Like, she didn't hold it there like I wasn't able to breathe. But she was, like, basically going, I am stopping you from crying. Um, so, and again, I, like, I'll throw it out there. Like, my life is not as hard as a lot of people's was, right? Like, I, I think people, many, many more people had it worse than me. Um, I'm not obviously impacted by it. I'm sure there are parts of my personality that are absolutely uh, impacted by uh, by those experiences but I don't think back on them and, and have any uh, obvious um, reactions to them so I bring all that up because uh, this wasn't a this wasn't a, a the story wasn't a one-off it wasn't something that that oh okay one time he did like this is happening all the time and at this point I'm in middle school like so this is seven years worth obviously you take the you know the in between periods I'm sure my parents or my grandparents didn't smack me around when I was a baby but uh, I remember as early as elementary school um, having things don't fuck pre pre preschool preschool I remember preschool um, things happening so uh, it, it, enough that I was was four or five um, from, from that period and so the question came up like why didn't we and there was a there was a moment of pause and my mom basically was like, yeah, I pro probably should have. We, in hindsight, we probably should have just done it. And this this moment was when I realized, again, I tell it in the story, but like my mom used to tell me stories about things that grandpa used to do. And I don't think that I ever connected. Um, she was still afraid of them. Like she was uh, in her thirties and she was terrified of my grandfather and my grandmother and it was only then that I had the with the stories are meant to be told in a way that kind of reveals like a five second moment where you have a realization or um, a moment of, of enlightenment or something and this was this was asking about this led to this moment where I was like that's why we moved that's why we got away uh, I don't. I remember all through middle school, we didn't go back to my grandparents. Um, she didn't rely on them anymore, and uh, it was that. That was kind of the five second moment of the story. I was thinking of like, oh, like this is a tragic story. Like I had my eardrum blown out. Like I had to have surgery. I still have problems with my left ear, and uh, this was my five second moment. And it came from reaching out and just asking a question, like, why did we do these? Why didn't we do these things? And we, we, we had moved right after that to uh, a place that was, uh, I think, about 30 minutes to an hour away. There was no other way that we were going to be dropped off at our grandparents' house during this time. And um, that was my five-second moment. And, like, I'm not looking for, like, any sympathies or anything. I, I got people had much worse than me, and I'm, I'm okay. I am fine. But going through the story and trying to find out uh, more about it. It led to a five second moment in my 40s about something that my mother dealt with in uh, her 30s while still being afraid of her parents. And it was it was sad. That That's the saddest part about everything about the story to me is she didn't know what to do. Um, my parents divorced when we were five and 
my grandparents were not uh, a great support system and I'm sure mom had uh, friends and everything but you know in your early 30s um, a single mom doesn't have a lot of support especially back in the in the 80s and 90s it was considered um, right there's kind of a black mark on you for not being able to keep your marriage together and again I think part of that's why my grandparents um, hated my dad I think they also hated him just beforehand um, other things that uh, before the, the wedding, before the marriage, before the kids. And I think that my mom always told me I did the best I could. And that used to annoy the shit out of me. It, it used to annoy the shit out of me. Um, she also was physical. Um, she learned it from her, her father. I don't excuse that by any stretch. Um, and that was one thing that I said I would never do is, um, is hit my kids in anger. Um, I have had to do a spanking um, but it's one of those things where uh, I it wasn't it wasn't something I wanted to do I never did it in anger and it's never happened again and it was a guilt moment for me that um, that didn't feel good that was that was awful and the last thing I ever wanted to do was to turn into my grandfather who also to turn into my mother and these things kind of all kind of came to um, a head. They asking my mom about this one question, and it it changed the the way I look at what uh, she had to go to through when we were, were kids. So that's why I wrote the story, and uh, I hope I conveyed that.